I think the public would be surprised to know that every time a scientist or a scientific institution or life science company locates a gene, they immediately patent it. They declare it as intellectual property. Genetic companies like Myriad have been able to patent not just the test they make, but the information itself. So that, for example, they actually own the BRCA1 gene mutation. A lot of geneticists are very worried about the idea of patenting human genes. I, I share that concern. I mean, they have, nobody's invented a human gene, they've discovered it. I find it very difficult to understand how a company can, hold, can own a gene. You know, gene belongs to the human race. I don't think they've got an argument. You can't patent a gene itself. You can't patent something naturally occurring. That's absurd. Breast cancer runs in my family. My mother. My dad's sisters. But I found out it didn't have to be inevitable. I found out my risk with BRAC analysis. Myriad are now conducting an advertising campaign to raise women's awareness of their breast cancer risks. But others see a less altruistic motive. First of all, we need to understand this is about money as much as it's about science. Each of Myriad's BRCA1 tests cost $1,400. Yet such tests cost many millions to develop. I think there's always some level of criticism that people have um, when commercial entities are involved. It's important to understand that, that these, these tests uh, are, are, are currently expensive. New technologies will come to play that will actually lower the cost and make them available to a broader number of people. A patent is given, not indefinitely, but for a limited period of time, to allow someone who put the money and energy into developing a particular test or a particular drug to get some benefit back to make them take the risk. Because if I say to you, you discover this and it's in the public domain, what, why would you bother? The possibility uh, of a company profiting from these is, is actually a good thing because it, the, that company is given incentive to build services, to build products that will benefit humankind. If, if they don't benefit humankind, nobody's going to want to pay for them. Uh, insurance companies will not reimburse them and people will not use them. The driving force of genetic science today is disease prevention. This means looking at the genes you have and determining what they will do to you over the course of your life. Empowering you to make decisions that can affect your chances of survival. But the ultimate in preventative medicine is to avoid damaging genes being in your body in the first place. And the only way to do that is to intercept them before you are born. folks we've got in here today. Gwen, I'm going to start with this leg that I'm touching. Gwen Berkowitz is having fertility treatment, but not because she is infertile. She and her husband Jeff are using a groundbreaking new procedure called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Their hope is that PGD will give them a child able to survive more than a few weeks. For Jeff and Gwen, there was no warning that either of them carried any kind of genetic disorder until it claimed the life of their first child two years ago. They have come to the sea to perform a simple ceremony to commemorate the passing of their daughter, Logan Page. Logan was born with a congenital disorder called mitonic dystrophy. I didn't hear a cry. I heard like one little whimper and that was it. And, but they brought her over to me. Like a few minutes later, they put her on my chest just for a second. I just, you know, I was like, this is amazing. This is my baby. And I, it was like I was unaware of the tubes and the, the vent. I just felt like, this is my baby. I'm going to get to take her home in a couple of days. Before they took her to the Neil Day intensive care unit, they brought me over and they let me. They were because they were worked. They like there's a problem because she cannot. She can't breathe on her own. Logan never did breathe unaided. She survived just five weeks. Logan's genes were inherited from both her parents, but the mitonic dystrophy gene was inherited from Gwen. The affected gene is responsible for muscle control and it goes wrong like this. As well as the normal arrangement of base letters, it has an unusual addition. 
a series of regular repeats. C T G, C T G, C T G. Everyone has a certain number of these triplet three nucleotide repeats. Jeff happens to have seven of them on one of his chromosomes, and on his other chromosome he has 16, and that's totally normal. Over on Gwen's side, though, she has 225 of these CGG triplets. That's too many. And that gives her some symptoms of myotonic dystrophy. Like opening jars is when I noticed it. I can show you now with my hand. If I tighten it really tight for like four seconds, five seconds, and then try to open it, that's as fast as I can open it. So. When Gwen's 225 repeat bases were passed on to Logan, a further mutation occurred and she inherited 1,500. The lack of muscle control in Logan's body was so severe, it was fatal. For Gwen and Jeff, there is a 50-50 chance that any future child will inherit Gwen's faulty gene. These are not good odds, and having had an affected child raises the chances of having another. It's a lottery, and, and you, are, you are basically taking a chance. And you don't know how the dice are going to fall, you don't know how the cards are going to play out, and so you have to cheat. This means using pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. In simple terms, it allows Dr. Hughes to cheat at the game of genetic cards. If every hand is an embryo, before they commit to playing that hand, Hughes can analyze it to see if it has the mutated gene. Only when he is sure it's clear will he allow the Berkovitz to play it. Gwen and Jeff have decided that their only chance of a healthy child is to use PGD. 17 of Gwen's eggs have been removed. A single sperm is injected into each egg, and they're left to grow. After three days, 11 eggs have successfully developed into embryos. Each is a collection of eight cells, but enough that one can be spared. The cell they remove will be sent away to be tested for the mitonic dystrophy gene. The next day, all the biopsies arrive in Detroit at the genetics testing center run by Dr. Hughes. To find out which embryos are affected, they count the number of repeat bases they've inherited from their parents. 